Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. Episode five, Crab Ninja. This one's gonna be a two-parter. Today, more of the graphics stuff, and I'll leave the code stuff for the next one. Okay, but first let's check out the original so we all have an idea of what needs to be done. Okay, so for one, this guy faces me at all times. When he unsurfaces, he throws his stars and then goes back underground. So his attack consists of two star projectiles that arc, one to the right and one to the left. He seems to unsurface when I move out a certain distance from him. Although this seems a little annoying how he'll never come out if I wait for him. So maybe I'll just make a timer so he'll unburrow always after a set time. I can always easily change this to make him unburrow when I move away if I have to. Okay, I think we can get back to the remake now. So just like with the Raymond model, I have the original Crab Ninja model with all the animations over here. As you can see, the UV map is pretty messed up, but that's no problem. It's not like I was going to use it anyway. So as per usual, I took the base into ZBrush as a sculpting guide. I wish I had some kind of time lapse of making this thing, but well, I'm just going to go for the usual the biggest change I think I made are those antennas, as I really don't know what those flaps in the original are. Let me move the camera a little bit here to show off the detail that I made. For the sculpting brushes, I pretty much use the same thing as for rock and wood and stuff, except I use a lot of the move brush when making characters. Sometimes I like to turn on AccuCurve for move brush when I want some kind of more pointy details. As for topology goes, I was very lazy here and just decimated my model to around 19k triangles. I know this isn't even close to being called good topology, but well, you know, this, this is not a main character and you'll never really see him up close in game. So there's just no way anyone will ever notice any bad deformation here. And taking into account that I'm doing this whole thing solo, I want to cut corners wherever I can. Let me fast forward a little bit and show you how the animations look on this bad topology model. In my opinion, there's really no way to tell there's something wrong here. If you're wondering why I'm suddenly doing retopology at all, that's because Nanite doesn't support um, skeletal meshes. So anything that you can move using a skeleton. Okay, so first I copied the vertex weights for the skeletal deformation from the original model to my model using a data transfer modifier. And then I laid out my UVs. I used Marmoset to bake out my maps from the high poly to low poly for texture painting. And then I paint the whole thing in Substance Painter. I'll go here kind of layer by layer to talk about my process for texturing stylized models like this. So I started with some kind of base color that's more for the inside of the crab than, than the shell itself. And then I add some variation to it, some kind of noise. I also introduced this yellow spots using the curvature. Then I add some kind of base color for the shell. And just what, like with the inner part, I start adding variation. So first I make some kind of yellow curvature. Then I start with some kind of noise, some orange spotty patterns. Then I added these kind of bright spots where I imagined the shell would scratch itself a lot against different surfaces. And then there's a layer for these darker spots. So I'm basically adding more color variation. And for the roughness, I kind of made this roughness base made out of just a pearl and noise. Let's go into the roughness channel. And then added the grunge to kind of sell this kind of wetness of a crab shell. 
I also added the layer that kind of emphasizes the cavities. For the eyes, again, a base color for the pupils and these I painted in these veins to kind of make him more angry. And then I painted in the pupil highlight by hand. Also for the eyes, I had this kind of fake ambient occlusion using this kind of dark bluish color. Now for the shell, again, a base color. Then I kind of tried to sell the shell translucency by adding this kind of salmon color on the edges. And add in some color variation using some noise, a little dirt spots, and then kind of similarly for the roughness, first kind of a global noise, and then some, and then a different one to mix them together. And for the outer shell, again, a base color, we can go back to the inner shell. Uh, I added this kind of darker color where these two parts meet. And then I wanted to make these kind of lines. So first I add these darker lines on the shell, then brighter ones, then white ones, and then a couple ones that go perpendicular to those lines. I made these lines by using an anisotropic noise, blurring them and blur warping. And again, a edge highlight. And then the roughness, using grunge maps again. And then we have the star left, base color, edge highlights, some kind of noise to give it a little more realism, but not too much since I want to keep it stylized. Some more color variation and then roughness breakup. I usually like to add the ambient occlusion map on top to kind of push in the contrast, but not too much. And here we have him in Unreal Engine. I'm actually really happy with how he turned out. By the way, if anyone's wondering about LODs, I just let Unreal Engine generate them for me. I also imported the star by itself to act as a projectile for later. So I got the crab, but I don't have an enemy. Let's start by making a C++ class again. This time I chose the character class because it has these two built-in functions, line of sight and set focus, which can easily handle the crabs looking at player behavior. However, looking back at this, I think the character class is very much overkill here as these two functionalities I could easily create even if in an actor class, not even a pawn class. But let's stick with the character class because I'm too lazy to change this. While I'm at it, I'll also make a C++ component that's going to be the health component. This way, whenever I need something to have health, I can just add this component to it in the blueprint and not make it from scratch every time. For now, all I need this health component to have is a max health value that I can set in the blueprint and a current health value. And in begin play, I just set the current health to be the max health. So in my crab enemy class, I'm gonna have a projectile spawn component that's gonna be just the location for the projectile to spawn from and the health component we just made. I don't need to add a capsule component for collision and a skeletal mesh component for the mesh since this is already there in the character class. So I made a new blueprint from my crab enemy class and as you can see, it has all the components that come with the character class. So a character mesh, uh, an arrow component and a capsule component and a character movement component. And here are also my components. So the health component and the projectile spawn component, which I placed somewhere over here in front of the crab. Also, if I select the health component, you can see that I can set the max health for the crab and the current health is grayed out as this is not editable as it shouldn't be. I also promised to go over the animation blueprint in this video, so I think we can do that now. So here we are in the animation blueprint now. And here's my state machine for the crab. If we go inside, I have this state that's way underground over here. And this is just the animation that's the crab being underground. Let's go back now. And then we have a transition from way underground to surface. So when I go into surface, basically this is a surface animation. This one over here. And the transition for this is a boolean, is player in range. This boolean doesn't do anything yet, of course, because it's not connected to anything, but we'll go over that later. Right now I just want to go over the logic itself. So whenever the player is going to be 
in range of the crab. This is going to become true. And he will transition from the waiting underground to the surface animation. And once the surface animation ends, this cycle over here starts. There is no transition rule. They just add, So this means that when this animation ends, it will go straight to this state machine over here. So let's dig inside. And this is a cycle that's going to happen whenever the crab unburrows, right? So first he enters his idle animation. Here I have an automatic rule again, so this means that once the idle animation finishes, he goes into his attack state. And the attack state is just the attack animation. And then when he finishes his attack animation, he will transition to, the, to another idle state, which is the same idle animation again. It's, I just want him to do one more idle cycle once he finishes attack, and then he starts to burrow again. So the cycle ends on him being underground. And then we're going to have this variable called ready to surface that will become true after a couple seconds of him being underground. So it's basically a delay for him to be underground for a while. And once this becomes true, Again, if the player is in range, he will surface and start the whole cycle again. There are also these two states for when he dies and when he has taken damage. That will take him to the being hit animation. And the death animation. But since Raymond can't really do any damage yet, these are kind of here for show. Again, the for the transitions, here we have uh, is dead boolean that once it becomes true then he goes into the death state, ma state machine and same here once he has taken damage is true then the taken damage animation plays and from here we also can go to the death animation in case he for example gets hit twice while taking damage if he doesn't die however once the animation ends he goes back to his unburrowed cycle now to connect those variables that we have in the animation blueprint to actually do something we need similar variables on the blueprint or in C++, like over here, you can see it has died boolean or ready to surface boolean or here in C++, a, is player in range boolean. Of course, we don't have any logic in our code to drive those variables yet. Let me make a little example so you can imagine what that would look like. I'll call the any damage event. Okay. So this gets called when the crab takes damage. I take my health component and get my current health. Now we subtract the damage from our current health. And we check if our health is less than zero. I'll make a branch now. And if that is the case, I'll set has died to true. So now all we need is for the animation blueprint to use this has died variable to determine whether we should play the has died animation or not. And then to set these variables in the animation blueprint, we need to go into the animation blueprint event graph. Here we can try to get the pawn owner, which means that the owner of this animation blueprint. So in our example, this is the crab. And then we need to cast to a BP crab. What this means is that we're kind of telling Unreal Engine that this pawn is a crab. And if we're right, then we can go ahead with the logic. And if we're wrong, we'll just get a cast failed. So when we, once we have our object as a BP crab, we can reference variables from the BP crab. For example, has died. We can use that to set the animation blueprints local is dead variable and now the animation state machine will know that is dead is true so it can go from the unborrowed cycle state to the death state okay let's change the topic a little bit and talk about the star projectile okay so i want to make the star to be spinning around while it's flying at the player and the best way to do this is in the shader this is very easily done as there's a node in the shader editor that does this for me it's called rotate about world axis cheap 
make this work, I plug in the Z axis into world position offset. So it rotates around the Z axis. And for the rotation amount, I plug in the time and multiply it by some kind of amount to make it rotate faster. One thing to know, when using this node, you also need to use the fixed rotate about axis normals node. Here you also plug in the rotation angle, the same one that I plug in my rotate about world axis cheap. And for the rotation axis, I choose the Z axis by making a vector with X and Y at zero and Z equal to one. I also added an option to mask the rotation through vertex color. I did this so the Crab Ninja can use the same material as the Starfish model. I don't really know if this is better performance wise or sh I should just make two materials. If anyone knows, you can let me know in the comments. Okay, now for some particles. So in the original game, when the Starfish gets destroyed, it spawns some kind of magical particle effect, but I think it would be cooler if it would actually spawn some kind of floating bubbles whenever it disappeared. So it matches the aesthetic of a more aquatic creature. On the Raymond Pirate community forums, I also got a hold of all the original textures from the game. And amongst those textures, I found a bubble texture that I liked and wanted to use for this particle effect. So first I made the bubble material for the particle effect. The texture itself is just the texture I found from the original game, but I also added some refraction in the back of the bubble. So it kind of gives it some more depth, I guess you could call it. And then for the particle effect, I use a spawn burst instantaneous. So they all spawn at once when the star gets destroyed. The shape location is just a little sphere. I scale the sprite size with their lifetime. Then I use the gravity force to move them upwards by setting the gravity to a positive value. And then I put a curl noise to give them a little more randomness. Also the lifetime of every bubble is random. For the projectile trail, I made a particle system that looks like this. By the way, shout out to UNF Games. That's where I learned the particle stuff that I'm using over here. They also give away for free all the textures that they use for their particle stuff and allow you to use them in your own projects. I definitely recommend to check them out. This particle system is made out of two trails, one for the refraction trail and one for the glowing trail. The systems themselves are very simple. I use a spawn per unit. That's why I had to move them around the scene so you could see it because this essentially means that it will spawn another particle whenever the particle system moves a set amount. And that's pretty much all there is for the particle system. So let's go into the materials. First, maybe the glowing one. So I take this kind of flamey glowing texture that I got from UNF Games and pan it around. And then I use this derived HDR from LDR node to kind of control how much the particle system glows. Here, if I change the glow strength, you can see the effect more. Let's change the 10 or 100. And that's pretty much it. And for the refraction material, it's maybe a little hard to see what it's doing, but I'm basically refracting the background through this kind of noise. And then I'm using these gradients to kind of make the refraction fade out to the sides. So it's the strongest in the middle. And the final thing I want to go over is this particle system whenever the crab burrows underground and or surfaces. So this system is made out of kind of three layers, one for the smoke that comes out, one more like dirt, and then these pebbles. The smoke and dirt work very similarly. I give them some kind of initial velocity I make the sprites rotate around, give them some drag so they don't fly too far away. I scale their size over their lifetime so they kind of grow. And then I use a scale color to scale the alpha down to zero with their lifetime so they fade out nicely and not just disappear. Now for the pebbles, I give them a velocity from point. So from the center point, they fly outwards. I scale their size over lifetime so they kind of scale down to nothingness and not just disappear. Use a gravity force so they start falling after a while. I don't think this collision is really doing anything. I'll just delete this. And then I add a rotational velocity so they are more erratic. And to make them be actual meshes, I use a mesh renderer. Choose a pebble mesh that I made in Blender. It's a very simple low poly pebble shape. And 
give it some kind of brown material that I found, I think in the Unreal Engine starter content. For the smoke materials, let's go into the smoke particle material I made. So here I drive the opacity with one of the clouds I got from the Easy Fog asset. And then to give this kind of more interesting cloud-like movement, I offset this texture's UVs by a noise that's moving thanks to this panner. I also like to add this depth fade node. What this does is it kind of sets the opacity of the particle to zero near intersections with other meshes. So the intersections become much more natural. Let me show you this in action. So here I put the particle material on the plane. And when I intersect it with the rock, it looks very nice. And here's what it looks like when I disable depth fade. Yeah, so I think it's a big difference. The dirt material is actually much simpler. It just uses some kind of noise texture that I think I got from the Unreal Starter Pack. And I use a radial gra gradient to kind of mask out the edges. So it has more of a circular shape. I also use the depth fade here. Now to make this particle effect play during the animation, like over here, you just need to add a new notify, a notify play Niagara particle effect. And then once you choose it, you can choose the particle particle effect you want attach it to some kind of bone in my case i attach it to the root bone okay that's it for today we'll continue with the code in the next one subscribe if you haven't already and if you had a good time why not leave a like goodbye